Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Meeting. Uh, today, we are going to be joined by Blossom and Lotus, our two Painted Turtle ambassadors. Um, as always, let me know where you guys are tuning in from today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Um, otherwise, we're just going to hang out with the two of these guys. I do have them out one at a time because we're going to let them crawl around and get some sun and some exercise. Uh, but I'll certainly get to meet both of them on their walks today. <laughs> right, Blas. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Good morning, Katie. Hi, Dad. <laughs> right, Blossom. I'm going to put her down. We can watch her kind of roam around this morning. <gasps> there you go. <laughs> As a Blossom, um, you can see she has this beautiful coloring on her. Uh, so she has red and orange and yellows on her skins, on her shell. So she's colorful all over. They are one of the most common types of turtles that we have here in Maine. Right. And so sometimes we do hear them referred to as sun turtles uh, or basking turtles. Uh, so these guys are the ones that we generally see hanging out on logs in the middle of the summer. Um, so they're basking, try to keep their shells nice and healthy. Uh, that's why we do have lotus, because she did no way to bask and get that vitamin D that's so important to their shell health. Good morning, Chuck from Rhode Island. <laughs> Hi, Blas. Oh, so they're very, very common around here. Um, you can, contrary to like our um, red-eared sliders, those common pet store turtles, they only have red right behind the ear area. Um, so that's how you can tell the difference between the two of them, even though they do have pretty coloring. Uh, Blossom is far more colorful than a red-eared slider, right? On the skin, on the shell, that pretty little face. Um, she has actually some red on her, in between her scoots, so all those little puzzle pieces. Um, so she has color all over her, right? And actually, it helps them camouflage in the water column. That's how, why they have all that pretty coloring. And with those regular sliders that we see in the pet stores, um, even though our painted are very common around here, they're one of our two species of our seven that we have here, meaning that are not endangered or threatened on any level. Um, in the Mid Atlantic, in in the South, actually. Those red-eared sliders that people have as pets, um, they're even surviving right now in uh, Massachusetts. You can see those red-eared sliders in the wild. Um, it still is a little too cold our winters in Maine, um, but they will soon be able to survive our winters. Um, and they, in the south, have been able to actually outcompete our painted turtles. So they live in the same niche, which means that they live in the same habitat, they eat the same food as our <laughs> painted turtles. Uh, so even though these guys are very common around here, they are starting to struggle in other parts of the country. Chuck, can turtles smell? Uh, so she does have two little nares. You should let me show you. Right? Uh, so yeah, they can smell. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to focus. Right, Blas? There you go. So her two little nostrils right there. Right above her beak. <laughs> um, so these guys are omnivores, so they'll eat basically anything. Um, so they are aquatic or semi-aquatic species, and you can tell that because of how flat her shell is. And so in the wild, she would have to use that flat shell and her little webbed feet to swim really, really fast. Um, so she does spend most of her days in her little pond in her outside enclosure. Um, she doesn't generally come out of the water until we have to make her. <laughs> When she's outside, at least. She much prefers to swim around. Right. Uh, so they're going to eat aquatic bugs, um, aquatic plants. Her platters. Uh, so she's actually going to get fed today. So she gets some cut up greens, some carrot. Um, 
those maintenance pellets that we see in the pet store, as well as some protein. Um, but sh those maintenance pellets that we see in the store, however, are not a complete diet. Um, so that is actually exactly why Blossom is with us. <laughs> so she'll let me catch her quickly. You can see the back of her shell curves up where it should curve down. And so if she were in the wild, her tail and her legs would be exposed. She would have her dra drag, so she wouldn't be able to swim as fast. And so she'd be very easy prey for a predator who was trying to catch her. Um, so that's why she is non-releasable. She was a pet, as were all of our reptile ambassadors at one point. Um, that's why she's non-releasable. She was only fed turtle pellets as a pet, which is kind of like us only eating granola bars. It's not There's nutrition there, but it's not a complete diet. And so that is exactly why she is with us, because she wasn't eating all those food groups that we also need, just like she does. Where you going? <laughs> and so Blossom is about 12 years old. Um, and we can tell that all her little scoots will actually shed about once a year or so. Uh, her and Lotus usually shed a little bit earlier in the springtime. Um, or you can actually visibly see them on the box turtles in our wood turtle ambassador. It is really hard to see on them. Uh, just because the water... Where are you going? <laughs> um, shaves them down a little bit. But don't bite me, please. Hi. You can't eat my shoelaces, huh? Oh, and she does shed, though. We can count the rings under the microscope. Um, so her scoots, her little puzzle pieces on her back, are the same stuff that our hair and our fingernails are made of called keratin. I know, you're hungry. <laughs> yeah. And so those little scoots will grow just like tree rings from the middle out. Uh, so that's how we can age our turtles. Um, we can also take a pretty good guess on how big they are because they do constantly grow. They do gr grow much faster when they are younger, uh, but they will still continue to grow as they get older. Good morning, Michelle. Say hello, Blossom. <laughs> no, so right now, Blossom and Lotus live right in our front office area. Uh, so when we are open as normal to the public, which we are not, obviously, because of the pandemic, um, they sit and greet everyone that comes in in the morning. And all of our visitors. We miss everyone, miss. Bye. <laughs> Good morning, Teresa. Happy Wednesday. Blossom, you got, Blossom's like, I got stuff to do. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Blossom, where are you going? And so of our seven species here, um, so we also have our snapping turtles, which are the other of the two that are pretty common around here. Um, our painteds, our snappers, are the only ones that are not threatened at all. Um, but we also have blandings, um, musk, <laughs> uh, wood turtles, box turtles, and spotted turtles. Right? Yeah. Especially right now, we are seeing a lot of those hatchlings starting to emerge. Uh, right now, we have uh, quite a few hatchlings that we are currently um, taking care of to they get a little bit bigger. Um, but we were really lucky this year that we got a couple spotted turtles as well as a couple wood turtle. Uh, a little ha quarter-sized hatchlings. Uh, which is really, really special. Uh, so we're working with Fish and Wildlife, trying to figure out where exactly we're going to release them um, because they are not doing well in the wild. So we want to make sure that we release them in the best type of habitat for them so that they can survive and reproduce and help the populations grow back. Kara, are all your turtles get fed a similar diet? Um, yes-ish. Um, so, Blossom and Lotus and Percy, our spotted turtle ambassador, all get um, a mix of shredded greens, some shredded carrot, 
Um, those maintenance pellets, they also get a couple little wheat germ pellets and then some protein. Um, so whether that's a mealworm, a piece of fish, um, a piece of worm. Um, so it just depends on the day. We do rotate their proteins just to make sure that they're getting all the different treats and different nutrients. Right? <laughs> um, and then our box turtle and our wood turtle ambassadors do get a more similar diet. Uh, so where Blossom, Lotus, and Percy, we dump their food in water because they are aquatic turtles. They're going to spend most of their time in the water. Um, we do put George and then our box turtles platters on like literally a, like a little slate or a flat plate and they'll eat from that. Um, so they get greens, some shredded carrot or squash. I think they got um, zucchini today. Um, they'll get some fruit, uh, which th we don't give our painted turtles at the moment. Uh, so either berries or apples or something native. Um, and then they'll get a little bit of tomato. And George actually really likes that as his favorite part of his salad. Um, and they do get uh, more varied options for protein. Um, so our box turtles and our wood turtle would get um, mealworms and fish just like the uh, and worms just like these guys would. But they also may get um, cut up worm. They sometimes will get uh, crickets. Don't <laughs> bite my shoes. So they're a bit similar, but they are a little different all at the same time. Chuck, yes, snappers can get huge. Um, so the largest snapping turtle I've ever seen was an 85-year-old ambassador um, at a nature center. Um, and he was easily about a meter across. Um, so he was a huge turtle. <laughs> Um, so they, how they did their programming with him was a bit more, um, different just because he was so big. <laughs> it's not like they could just carry him around like we do with our turtle ambassadors, but yes, they can get very, very large. Um, actually those snapping, t those, uh, right eared sliders can as well. Um, so these guys that are painted turtles generally live, uh, 30 to 40 years, those uh, red-eared sliders and snappers can easily live to be up into their 50s. Uh, so if you are looking to have a turtle pet, you definitely want to be do your research. Um, like I said, with the varied diet, they do need some kind of gross things. Um, but they also need to get UV, UV light. They need a temperature gradient in their enclosures, so they need... A really warm spot for them to bask in and then a little bit cooler area so they can decide where they want to be because they are reptiles and they can't keep themselves warm like we can. Right, Blas? Um, then they need that UV light, that sunlight or fake sunlight if, during the winter time to keep their shells nice and healthy. Right? And so they are a very long term, more difficult pet. Um, so it's definitely a long-term commitment for our reptile pets if you decide to have one. Um, but those sliders can easily get about three to four times bigger than Blossom. Uh, so Blossom is about the size of my hand. Um, those red-eared sliders can get very, very large. So that's another consideration to think about when you are looking to get a red-eared slider pet store turtle as a pet. Good morning, Lori. Welcome from Connecticut. Yeah, she is pretty cute. I'd agree with <laughs> Lori and Linda. Oh, thank you. We love them, too. <laughs> Kitty, I've seen some really huge snappers. Magnificent beasties. Yeah, they are very much have the dinosaur look going for them, which makes sense. They're reptiles. Um, they've been around for millions of years. Um, so these guys are quite amazing the fact that they have survived so long and evolved right um those snapping turtles definitely really do look like dinosaurs yes exactly chuck you took the words out of my mouth when the upon near my barn snapper came to my horse's stall looking to lay her eggs in the shavings quite largely helped their back to the pond yeah so it's very possible um so turtles will actually lay their eggs in the same place that they're 
mom was born, grandma was born, great grandma was born. It's called ancestral breeding grounds, um, which is why you see them trying to lay eggs in odd places that, to us at least, um, because that's the place that their ancestors were all born in. Um, and they're going to look for that nice, soft, sandy area so they can use those back legs to dig that hole with so they can lay them. Um, but they will t- try to go to that exact spot. Um, and especially with our roads and our highways, they often get hit trying to get to that location. Um, so their GPS in their head is better than our phones. Um, it's all through magnetics. That's how um, like our sea turtles, that's how they migrate. Um, So they're quite incredible creatures. Uh, Once they get to that location, however, it may not be the same habitat that it once was when they were born there. Um, So they are they're very persistent. Um, Sometimes they will, however, hit like those sound barriers on the highways, um, and they will actually just turn around and not reproduce. Which for our f- five turtles here in Maine are five of the seven species that we have here that are endangered or threatened, that can be detrimental uh, if a mom isn't able to reproduce that year. Um, so they will just kind of lay their eggs um, in a safe location, but pretty much where they were born. And um, that's why they can be quite stubborn. Um, right now, you, you'll see a lot of hatchlings starting to hatch, uh, or during the, earlier in the spring, you'll find adults trying to migrate to that location that they were born to lay their eggs. Um, so you can always help them across the road, um, just kind of like this. Um, so if it's a blossom-sized turtle, you can hold her just by the back of the shell. Um, if it's a larger turtle, you can hold her um, with two hands. Um, but you definitely want to be careful if it's a snapping turtle in particular, because they can move their necks farther than our other turtles can. Uh, So honestly, with a snapping turtle, um, of course, with an adult's help, you you can hold them like this with two hands, um, just because it helps prevent their neck from able to be move around. Or what I like to do is I like to convince them to go onto a car mat or something like that. Um, you never want to drag a turtle across the road, uh, especially our snapping turtles, because this bottom shell on them, the, the snappers, is far more exposed with their limbs. And so they can get road burn and actually pass away from those infections that they can get when we drag them. Um, that's usually the easiest way. Um, you definitely you want to wash your hands before and definitely after handling a turtle with an adult's help, I will mention again, you don't want to, you never want to touch a wild animal without an adult's permission. Uh, We generally try to leave, we want to leave wildlife wild. We want to let them be, do their own thing. Uh, Sometimes they do need a little bit of help. Um, So we want to try to minimize how much we're touching them and bothering them and stressing them out. Right, Blossom? (laughs) Um, definitely wash your hands afterwards, just because ca- turtles can carry salmonella and some other diseases. Um, so you just, really just want to wash your hands after touching a reptile. Mm-hmm. Yes, they Chuck, you're right. They are... Um, oh, the birds are actually descendants of reptiles, opposite way around. Right? Um, so they're starting to see research where dinosaurs, we believe, are actually were feathered, um, which is not like we see in Jurassic Park or any of those dinosaur movies, which is really cool as we're continuing to learn more through research. We're learning more about how they evolved and how our dinosaurs and our turtles and our snakes and our reptiles and how they're all connected uh, to our birds. Oh, which is pretty cool. She does have a beak, just like a bird does. It is very strong, just like a bird's. Um, so you can tell in a couple ways how they were um, cousins. Kara, do you have to keep their beaks filed? Yes. Um, so they do a pretty good job of doing it themselves, but sometimes they do need a little bit of help, uh, which they don't generally appreciate too much, but we do help them when we have to. Um, we do try to keep their beaks filed through their diets that can help a lot. Um, or um, 
things for them to like nibble and play on. Um, so we do monitor it, um, but usually Blossom and Lotus do a pretty good job of keeping it filed down themselves. It's usually our a couple of our box turtles that we have to help out a little bit. Casey, or Katie, or not personally trying to help a snapper. Yes, you definitely want to be very careful handling a snapping turtle. Turtles have to be quite older than most animals to reach maturity. Yes, yeah, so you're exactly right, Chuck. Um, so it does take them longer to mature. Um, so when the turtles hatch, they're only about the size of a quarter. So with our painted turtles in particular, it can take up to six to ten years for a turtle to reach sexual maturity, um, which is another reason why they're not doing well in the wild in general. Um, our painted turtles, of course, like I said, are fine right now. Um, but turtles do take a long time to hit sexual maturity, and if there's a lot of things that could kill them on the way. Um, so a lot of times they get hit by cars, uh, just because the turtle's going to use its shell as a defense, and that's not going to stop a ton car. Um, they can, all under all these scoots, is just bone, um, so they can actually feel everything. <laughs> Um, so, it's just like us rubbing our hand, or our fingers along our fingernails. We can still feel it. Um, so can she, unfortunately. Um, but they do take a very long time to heal. And a lot of times, um, since they are very small when they hatch, they are very easy prey for a lot of our other animals. Uh, so we definitely want to be careful about that. Um... Katie, I keep flat boxing and drop cloth in my car. Thank you. That's awesome. That's a great idea. Um, for those of you that have ever attended one of our Wildlife Rescue 101 programs, so that's kind of pretty much what we suggest. Um, you can get them at like PetSmart and stuff like that. Uh, just a um, little cardboard box that you can put together. Um, I should keep one in my car. but um, You want a box, a towel, or some sort of cloth, and then gloves as well. Um, so especially if you find, uh, if you need to help a raptor or um, something along those lines, you definitely want to make sure you have leather gloves with you as well. Um, just to keep yourself and the animal safe. I would... Oh. Make sure can I learn that personally when I try to snappers. Next have quite reach and they jump. <laughs> yeah, the snap materials can definitely move their necks a lot farther than we would think. So you definitely want to be really, really careful if you find one of them. Um, I'm actually about to get Lotus out in a second, Chuck. Uh, good morning from San Diego. Welcome, Danielle. That's in Rush. Welcome. That's awesome. Hey, Blas. Um, so I'm going to get Blossom out quick. Um, and then we can hang out with her for a few minutes. I can tell you about her story. You know, it's getting to that time. And I definitely want to make sure you guys get to see everyone. Uh, so I'm just going to put the phone down quick. And then we'll grab her quickly. Lotus. Hello. Uh, so this is Lotus. Uh, so Lotus came to us after she was found by a realtor. Um, they went into a house that they were trying to sell, found Lotus and a couple other painted turtles in a black gross bucket with no way to haul out or no way to get out of the water. Um, so that's why Lotus is with us. She came to us with shell rot, which meant we could actually squish her shell. Um, so imagine if we could squish our bones. Um, on, like I said, under all those scoots is just bone. Um, you can see on her sides, uh, she has some scarring as well still. Um, this is actually when she shed this past spring. We were actually really excited because that was the first year that we've actually started to see some of the red peeking through on her sides. Um, so she still does not grow properly. You can see um, sideways her bottom shell is a lot larger than her top. Uh, so we have to be very careful uh, about her weight, and we have to get x-rays on for her very often, pretty often. Because you can see, her whole bum is exposed. Right, Lodi? Um, she's at about half the size that she should be. She should be about the same size as Blossom, and she's clearly not. Um, so I'll put her down just to give you guys a size reference. Yeah, 
is. So she's much, much smaller than Blossom is. I know, you got stuff to do. Okay, the others went to other nature centers. Um, because they all, and one did pass away, but the others, they are all non-releasable. They all had shell rot. Um, so it took a really long time for Lotus's shell to really start to heal. Um, cause obviously if we could squish our bones, like something's seriously really wrong. Um, so unfortunately that's why she did come to us, but now she does live with us in Sanctuary, her and Blossom. Our roommates, they hang out in the same tank together. Chuck Pain Turtles kept his pets come from pet stores and captured from the wild. Um, so unfortunately, it is technically still legal here in Maine um, and in several states to take these guys out of the wild um, because they're not technically currently endangered. Um, but um, really, <laughs> those red-eared sliders, they're non-native, they're invasive. Um, when they are released, like I said, they live in the same habitat, eat the same food as our painted turtles. Um, so we, we want as much as possible to leave wildlife wild. Um, these guys deserve to be in the wild where they belong. Um, we, they... They used to be more common at pet stores. Now you generally only see the red-eared sliders for the most part. Um, so if you do find a turtle, yes, they're very cute as little quarter-sized hatchlings, but they are a long-term pet. And like I said, our painteds can live 30 to 40 years. Um, they, Unfortunately, we have all of our reptiles because they were at one point pets that people didn't want anymore, not realizing how hard they are take care of, how long live they are. Um, so if you're really, really trying to get a turtle, um, please don't take them out of the wild. They deserve to be wild animals where they belong. <laughs> and those red-eared sliders are not native, um, so their populations are not hurting. Um, because they, sh they shouldn't be in the wild. And when you see them in the wild, it's because someone released them or their ancestor as a pet. Um, that they didn't want anymore. Um, so again, just please don't kidnap babies out of the wild, especially right now in the fall, they are starting to hatch. Um, so we do have uh, several little hatchlings in our care right now who are getting a little bit bigger um, because they are only about the size of a quarter. Um, they're very, very tiny, and so they are very easy prey for a lot of other animals. Uh, so uh, raccoons really enjoy hatchlings. Um, a lot of times you'll see nests that have been dug up um, by pre different predators. Uh, so they're already not doing well in the wild. So we want to try to help them out as best we can and leave them in the wild where they belong. Yeah. Your story is pretty sad, but we're very happy to have you, Missy. <laughs> right. Um, so, if, if you guys have any last questions, I can certainly answer them. Um, but as you might be able to hear, Bertram hasn't had his breakfast yet. <laughs> um, so, we're going to wrap up in a few minutes. Um, but as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, we are really grateful that you guys are still hanging out with us every single day. And Kara, have the ambassadors been getting a lot more walks outside since the quarantine with no tours? Uh, yeah, we have been still giving them enrichment stuff. Um, unfortunately, you might be able to hear Henry whining over there, because he wants to go for a walk, but unfortunately, we had, there's a case of rabies across the street, um, in the York Water District, they found a rabid fox, um, for, so just for safety, um, just, because we can never be sure, we are not letting Henry go really too far from his enclosure, so he's not overly thrilled, uh, but it is for his safety, <laughs> Right, but everyone else has been getting walks and getting some sunshine. Um, it's, you can hear Bertram yelling. He's um, still getting his training walks and getting to figure out how to be inside and learn how to go through doorways again. Because um, he's not a huge fan of it. <laughs> um, so yeah, everyone's still getting some extra attention. We do have a little bit of programming, um, but not very much. And so we do have to make sure that they have walks and toys um, to play with in their enclosures. 
Um, so we are trying to keep them as occupied as possible uh, for their own mental health and stimulation. Just like us, we need stuff to keep us entertained. So do they. Oh, you're welcome, Katie and Chuck. <laughs> Has he tried the jungle yet? Not quite yet. <laughs> right. So he's actually, he, he, Bertram's funny. He's, ravens, even though they're very large and they're a predator, they are neophobic, which means that they are afraid of new things. And so Bertram is terrified of everything. <laughs> um, after he throws things as a sacrifice, and he's very funny with new things. So we haven't quite gotten into that point yet. Uh, but we did get the Jenga, though, so thank you so much, Katie. We really, really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Chuck. Ready for breakfast? Hi, Aunt Cindy. <laughs> uh, so, um, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone. Say bye, Lotus. <laughs> bye.